Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition is a very interesting device. It takes aspects of the S20, Note 20, and some of Samsung's budget phones and combines it all into one single device. And it costs between $600 or $700 US, depending on where you buy it, or $950 Canadian. And while Fan Edition means, well, absolutely nothing, this is a really great phone. So first, the design. I'm sure you've heard the back is plastic, and I kinda don't mind, because it's really not that bad. Sure, it doesn't really feel like glass or aluminum, and you can definitely tell that it is plastic, but between the smooth sides and the matte back which kinda blend together, the phone feels really great to hold. It doesn't feel cheap, it hides scratches fairly well, but not so much fingerprints and smudges. We're all kind of haunted by those cheap, hollow, slimy feeling plastic backs of past Samsung phones, but this is not that. It's actually really good, and kind of refreshing to have a lightweight phone in your pocket in 2020. Besides that, the camera bump is quite minimal, you have a USB-C port, there's no headphone jack here, not the best feeling buttons either, there's a micro SD card slot, and a solid sounding bottom and front dual speaker setup. Up front, the bezels are not super thin, but they're not bad either, and you have an in-display fingerprint scanner which is fine, but can be annoying at times depending on what angle you press your finger into the display. It works about as well as past Samsung devices, no real improvements here. There's also a hole punch camera cutout up top. What's kind of interesting though is that Samsung actually put a silver ring around the camera cutout so it doesn't really blend in as well with black wallpapers or when the phone is off, compared to Samsung's other flagship and premium devices. But the 6.5 inch display here is excellent. It's 1080p, 120Hz, and OLED. As you'd expect with a Samsung phone, it is a beautiful panel. Videos and photos look great, scrolling through social media and between home pages feels smooth, and when you're playing games, just has an extra layer of buttery smoothness with that high refresh rate. And this kind of leads into performance and specifications. So this phone has a Snapdragon 865, 6GB of RAM, and storage options of 128 or 512GB, with 5G support as well. And no matter what you do on this device, it just runs smoothly. Whether it's just day-to-day -day opening and closing apps, multitasking, gaming, and even running Samsung DeX mode wired or wirelessly, which does work on this device, no issues here. This is an absolute beast of a phone. And speaking of gaming, one of the benefits of going with an Android device in 2020 right now is the fact that you have the largest amount of gaming possibilities on your device, with Stadia, Xbox Game Pass, and certain games that may or may not be banned on iOS devices, this is a great phone for people who want to game or use cloud gaming services. And even Android with Samsung's One UI on top, it runs great. Now you do have an absolute load of features, but everything feels more refined, looks better than past versions, and is just really nice. And if you hate the icons or whatever, you can totally skin it. Now, in this phone's price range, there are quite a few phones with excellent cameras, but I gotta say, this device can still definitely hold its ground. The front camera is 32 megapixels and takes some pretty decent selfies, I'd say. This phone also shoots 4K video and you're hearing the microphone quality of this device right now. But unlike Samsung's more expensive flagship phones, there is no autofocus in the front camera. That being said, it's still pretty good for vlogging or just talking head videos like this one. And at the back there are three cameras, 12 megapixels for the main and ultra wide cameras, as well as an 8 megapixel 3x telephoto zoom camera. And shots are good. Some photos can be a little bit oversaturated with some highlights being a bit blown out in some scenarios and it can take about a second longer to focus on subjects as well compared to other phones, but overall despite these few shortcomings, shots are generally impressive and these cameras are quite reliable. There's solid dynamic range, photos are sharp and full of detail, and having the versatility of these three cameras here is excellent. The phone also does pretty well with night shots, 
and these shots were taken with Samsung's night mode which works very well as you can see from these sample photos that I shot. Fourth, 4K video up to 60 frames per second is also pretty nice. Stabilization is smooth and natural, microphone quality is great, and overall Samsung has definitely been doing an excellent job with video recording on its devices. Great work. And using this phone every day with its 4500 milliamp hour battery, it can certainly last long enough for a full day of usage. I use my phone for a lot of business communication, social media, watching videos, taking photos, and now playing a lot more games with Game Pass on this device, and no issue making it through a full day. And if my other devices need a little bit of a charge throughout the day, this phone also supports wireless power share. So you can charge up your earbuds, smartwatch, or other phones, or really any device that supports Qi wireless charging. And for charging up the phone itself, it does support 25 watt fast charging and wireless charging too. Okay, so the S20 Fan Edition fits into the increasingly popular category of mid-range devices quite well. It also competes very well with devices that are also in this mid-range category from Apple, Google, and OnePlus, and even devices from the flagship high-end category too. The phone has a beautiful display, solid performance, a versatile set of cameras, and a design that really isn't special or memorable, but isn't really bad by any means. If you want a more minimal software experience, sure, definitely look elsewhere. But in 2020, One UI is actually quite refined and has some really useful features. There's also three years of guaranteed software updates, which helps this phone compete better with devices from Apple and Google. So overall, I do like this phone quite a bit. It offers a lot of great features and specifications for quite a reasonable price. But just keep an eye out though for the Galaxy S20, the regular S20, as it might actually be on sale in some stores for the same price or even cheaper than this phone, and in that case, I'd go for that device for the better build and some of the better specification options available. But enough about me, I want to hear your thoughts on the Galaxy S20 OnlyFans, I mean, Fan Edition, in the comments down below. Subscribe, and thank you for watching.